morning everyone welcome 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 and hello 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 good morning san francisco good morning orlando good morning new york city good morning stockholm good morning uh adelaide um Good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> Good morning. That's all the cities I know. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's all I got. Um, I don't. I can't think of one other city on the whole wide earth. I'm pretty sure that's all of them, though. I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Hello, my friends. How are y'all? And golden Oreo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for gifting us up. The first sub of the night. Amazing, 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 amazing golden Oreo. Thank you. G click. Oh, L D S K E S K and click underscore. Oh, shk. R. do we have news for you, little sharky. Last night, the end of the stream, about the last hour or so, was completely sh little sharky themed. <laughs> um, it was like, it was like you, like, the whole time. Except not really. We, um, we did, we learned how to say shark in ten different languages. Ten different languages. I don't know if I remember them all. I haven't gone over them since last night's stream, even in my own head. So, yes, we will try to do seven, at least seven ways to say little sharky, starting off with seven, and maybe we'll make it to ten, okay? So, we have shark, tiburon, in, uh, so tiburon, I can't look at chat, you're gonna get it out, you're gonna give me too many answers. Tiburon in Espanol, in Korean it's Sango, in Japanese it's Same, in, in French it's Reikin, in Polish it's Reikin, but spelled different, in Gaelica, Gaelica, um, Gaelic, it's, um, Shework, Shework, um, in, oh, so we have seven, we have seven, um, what other languages? We did Italian, but I can't remember what it was, Squalo, Squalo, something like that, Squa, Squalo, is that it, Squalo, okay, Squalo, um, we did Hebrew, which was Tarish, Tarish, although we didn't get any clarification on the pronunciation of that, so it might be Tarish or Tarish, I'm not really sure. Um, and then German is Heifish, 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 Heifish. Click, click, click. We did it. Ten languages. Shark. I'm very impressed that you remember so many of them. I forgot them after Same. Thank you, thank you. We also did learn it in Polish, um, but I think I forgot. Oh wait, no, no, no. Polish was Hlykin. There was another Scandinavian language. Someone named it at the end. Um, after we did everything, and I can't remember even what language it was. Um, someone, there was, there was a, it might have been Norwegian might have been Swedish. Oh, we didn't do Russian, no. It was, I'm pretty sure it was a Scandinavian language, but, um, I can't remember. I cannot remember which one. Click, click, click. Ah, it's high in Swedish. 
Wasn't there, but in Iceland it gets Hakar, Hakarl, Hakarl, Hakarl. I don't know how. I have no idea how to pronounce Icelandic words. Hakarl, Hakar. I don't know if there are is like a like a flipped R, like a Karl, or if it's like a Carl. <laughs> Carl, picking up right off where we left off. I know, truly. We just there's so many languages. There's so many languages. <laughs> ha Carl. <laughs> I feel like it's probably not Ha Carl, but I literally know nothing about Icelandic pronunciation, so who knows? <laughs> ha Carl. <laughs> that hurts them. <laughs> Sharks do hurt children. That's fair. Or I'll kind of merge into a single letter when pronounced Hi Carl. Hi Carl. 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 Hi, Carl. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Something like a little tinkle in your brain. Thank you, Sharom. Yes, I do like this necklace with this, um, with this. And look, it has a little secret. It opens up. So you can put something inside it. I have my carnelian. <laughs> I just dropped it. But I had my carnelian and my amethyst in there. And now my carnelian is somewhere on the floor. Oh, I see it. Carnelian is saved. Scooch, scooch. also love carnelian. It wasn't this stone, but the very first, like, crystal of significance that I ever owned, um, was carnelian. Carnelian, carnelian. I remember I got a carnelian stone whenever I was a, I believe, a sophomore in high school, and it was very special to one is your favorite? Labradorite. Always. I also like Moonstone very much. Moonstone and Labradorite are my two favorite. The ring that I usually wear, I'm wearing a different ring today, but the ring that I usually wear is Moonstone. Moonstone and Labradorite are actually pretty similar because they both have this flare quality in them, which is something that I think is really pretty. Labradorite kind of feels to me like a darker version of Moonstone, and Moonstone feels like a like a lighter version of Labradorite, um, because they both have this. Let's see if I can find it again. This flare. I don't know if y'all can see it. There it is a little bit. It kind of has a blue flare. Um, the flares are in different colors, though, depending on the strain, the stone strain. There's Labradorite that has flare in. The two most common are orange and, um, like orange and, like, green, but there's also Labradorite with blue flare and with purple flare, um, yellow, whatever. I don't think I've ever seen Moonstone with a different colored flare, other than kind of this, like, bluish green. But, perhaps it exists. Perhaps it exists. I don't know why, but I kind of guessed it would be Labradorite. I had that feeling. I've said it before, so you might have remembered it in your subconscious. Namako. Thank you for your bits. Thank you for your pretty bits. Bits, bits. Sugar. Rainbow Moonstone. Oh, is Rainbow Moonstone like multicolored flare? That would make sense. Labradorite and Moonstone sound like something out of Minecraft. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's like saying 
that's like saying like a hammer shark sounds like something out of subnautica like yes because the ocean came first the earth came before the mines jose real mines existed before minecraft and they were full of stones <laughs> They're still full of stones. They are still full of stones. The children here in for the mines. <laughs> they do. As a child, I do indeed yearn for the mines. Someone that was toxic to me in the past gave me a crystal that she really loved and I dropped it by accident in the toilet. So, um, I have a giant Labradorite. Um, you can kind of see it right here. This is a giant, it's like this big Labradorite crystal ball, okay? And it uh, was given to me by someone very toxic. <laughs> I still like it though. Um, it's still like one of my favorite rocks. Um, it was a very kind gift. And that's all I can say about it, you know? Like, I don't mind accepting gifts from people who I don't like. I don't mind. I think some people have big issues with it. Um, some people are like, you know, if someone bad sends you something, you should like throw it away in disgust. But I, I don't feel like, I don't, f I, I just don't feel that way. If someone that I don't like gives me something that I do like, I will just keep it. I am fine with keeping the thing. You gotta surgically remove the negative energy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Just cleanse it, exactly, vibe with it, yep. As long as I treat the Labradorite with care and love. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hello, pesky fish, pesky fish, pesky fish. Thank you so much for your sub, pesky fish. First sub of the night. Sorry, not first, the second. Second sub of the night. Total. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, pesky, 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 pesky. P. Shk. E. S. K. Click, click. Y. Shk. F. Shk. I. Shk. S. H. Click. Second bit of the night. Thank you so much, pesky fish, for your second bit of the night. You're just, you're just coming in second. You're on a little second streak. <laughs> second is the best. Second is the best. Thank you, pesky fish. <laughs> Thank you, pesky fish. <laughs> if someone bad gives me food, I'll eat it, but it wouldn't change how I feel about them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. In a sense, it can sometimes be better to get stuff from people you dislike because there's less of a sense of reciprocity. Mmm. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Nobunakalu, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for gifting a sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And click O shk B shk U shk and click A shk G click A shk U shk W shk U shk and shk green ninja I would I have a question for you all though, okay? As we all know, first is the worst, second is the best. What is third? How, what do you say for third? Do you say third is the one in the pink polka dot dress? Or do you say third is the one with the treasure chest? With the hairy chest? I have hairy, hairy chest? I have never heard that before. Where are y'all from? Is this from the- is this some Midwest- some Midwest tomfoolery? What is this? The hairy chest? The hairy chest? Who- what region is this? What region is giving them hairy chests? Definitely a Midwest thing? Oh my god, the Midwest- the Midwest needs to put their shirts on, okay? I come from Louisiana, 
and it's it truly seems like it's split. Louisiana, sometimes you get polka dot dress, and sometimes you get third is one with the treasure chest. Um, like people do both versions. I heard it growing up in New England. Okay, so a hairy chest is maybe the East as well, if we have New England and the East Coast. That's wild. How crude, how vulgar, how vulgar of the East. Back in my hometown, people said third is the dirt. <laughs> but that doesn't even rhyme. First is the worst, second is the best, third is the turd. <laughs> Do they speak French in Louisiana? Um, no. There are some people who speak Cajun French, which is a, it's a little bit different from French. It's like a, a French dialect um, that's kind of like isolated from like the 14th, 15th century. And it's also like, um, uh, has like an, has its own accent. Um, and mostly only the much older generations speak that. It's it's a dying language. Um, that said, there are a lot of French, Cajun French phrases that are kind of integrated into English. So even though me and like most of my peers did not speak Cajun French, well, we like have more kind of random French words or Cajun French words that like we say in normal life. Um, but it's not really like we're speaking another language. There's just like, just lingo. We have Cajun French lingo that we speak a lot. I always heard hairy chest as well. Ohio here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I heard it for magpies growing up. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy. Interesting, interesting, interesting. We have a little visitor. Hello, girl. Hello, 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 hello. Shka, shka, shka. All right. I, my friends, have coffee today and a different mug. <laughs> I had to retire the old one. This mug isn't actually new. This is just my guest mug. This has always been my guest mug. And now um, I've decided the guests don't get a mug until I get a new mug and I get the guest mug because my my mug is just too embarrassing it's it just got it just got too far too far show us the mug you've seen the mug pandu if you were a real fan you already know okay okay <laughs> Did you mug- did your mug get mugged? I didn't actually throw it away yet, it's just sitting on my counter very sadly, but I'm gonna throw it away soon. Okay. Oh my goodness. I just like, pet my cat, and when I lifted my hand, there was like this giant fur ball, and I almost just like put it right inside of my mug, right inside of the coffee. That would have been so sad. But, it didn't happen. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I'm going to move my cat's cat tree closer. Uh, and that way she is slightly less at risk of falling if I do a tarot reading. How do you take your coffee? Well, I drink decaf because I made it, I realized that I just don't want to be caffeine dependent, and um, now that I'm not caffeine dependent, I, almost every time that I do drink coffee, it makes it really, really hard for me to sleep that night, no matter how early I drink it, and also I think it makes my anxiety a little bit worse. So I drink decaf, and I don't put anything in it. Let's see what the cards have for Green Ninja, Green Ninja, Green Ninja. Green Ninja. Click, click, click. Green Ninja. We have the King of Wands, the 
seven of wands, very fiery, and the page of wands. What the heck? The page of wands. King, seven, and page. So this is good. Wands maxing, truly. This is good, Green Ninja. Um, uh, I see a social victory here. I think you're about to have a major social victory, um, climbing the social ranks. I don't know if you're going to be climbing any ranks, like, um, uh, like when it comes, like, I don't, I don't know if, I, I think that this probably doesn't mean a sort of material, um, step up, so this probably, not that this isn't possible, but I don't think that this reading is about something like a, a promotion or a change of office or, um, I don't even necessarily think it's making new friends or, like, relocating in any way, um, or reaching any kind of, like, higher echelon of people, but I think it's more like moving from the someone in the background to someone who's important in a social sphere, if that makes sense. I think um, within your social sphere, this is you getting a lot of um, attention and also um, becoming someone who people want to be around, becoming someone who people gravitate to in a, in a room, people who are, people are interested in you. People are interested in you, Green Ninja. They want to know your opinion on things. They want to be in the room where it happens, and being in the room where it happens is being in the room with you, Green Ninja. You are where it happens. You are where it happens. You are where it happens, okay? Um, yes, you are where it happens. And I think that this is going to happen as the result of some kind of, um, some kind of specific social victory. I don't know what that could be. Um, it might be you outshining someone else in, in particular. Um, it might be you, you know, coming into work with, like, the best playlist. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I think that there's some kind of specific moment of a social victory that makes you rise in the social, social, social ranks. Pesky fish, thank you for gifting us up. The shirk. E. S. K. Click. Click. Y. Sk. F. Sk. I. Dot. S. And there she goes onto her cat tree. Um, yes. Okay, let's see what else we've got for you, Green Ninja, Green Ninja. We have the Seven of Pentacles and Temperance. Temperance. Temperance, Temperance, Temperance. So, you're rising in the social ranks. And I think that you are going to use your elevated social status um, for the good of other people somehow. I think that you're going to be, I think that you're going to um, not let the popularity change you. You know what I mean? I think you're not going to let the popularity change you with something like temperance. You've worked for a very, very long time to be exactly who you are, and now that you're finally popular, um, or not finally, but now that you've gained popularity, I think that you have enough knowledge of yourself and of others that you know this change of status is not and should not be an impetus for you to change. Rather, it is a moment for you in everything that you are and who you are to just shine that you got where you are because you are yourself and um, now you finally get to um, kind of just be yourself on a larger scale and be loved and have the opportunity to love more widely um, than you've gotten to love before. 
if that makes sense. If that would make sense. Alright, let's do a oracle card, 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 oracle card. Hmm, Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Yes, I think you're going to be navigating a social space with a lot of ease a lot of ease green ninja I think suddenly it's going to become um, easy for you easy for you, alright? I don't know what it is that you're that you've been going through for the past couple days green ninja <laughs> oh no, what is my cat doing? <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> oh no <laughs> Oh no! Um, she has spotted prey, something like that, something like that. Um, but I think it's the Fey and the Fern set. Yes, this is um, the uh, Primrose and Prose, Primrose and Prose, and it's by the same artist who does the Fey and the Fern set which is another tarot set that I have. This, however, is the Anima Mundi tarot. The Anima Mundi tarot. I think she just wants to get in the window. <laughs> Let's see. She'll probably make it. She'll probably make it. She's making me turn orange, though, with all that blue light. Um, Green Ninja, you're gonna do great, okay? You're gonna do great. You're gonna do great, Green Ninja. You have prosperity in your future, and a lot of, you know, social prosperity, I would say. Okay? Thank you so much for letting me read for you. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope it resonated a little bit. There she goes, off and away. Thank you very, 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 very much, Green Ninja. Also, hello, Caleb. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Yako. Hello, Yako. Hello, Yako. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Shkutaka, Yako. Shkutaka. Hello, Sleepy Fun. Your channel a few weeks ago. Your streams make me smile a lot. Aww. Thank you, Reeks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Reeks Bunker. Thank you. Work's been getting to me with some nonsense, so change there will be welcome. Thank you for the read. It was great. Ah, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Shuk, shuk. Regarding subs, I've been hearing that apparently for some people, subs aren't being auto-renewed. It's been theories that may have to do with some price changes, so double-check your subs just in case, because you may have to manually renew them. Apparently, it's mostly happening to people from Australia, Canada, and the UK. Okay, good to know, good to know. If you're from Australia, Canada, or the UK, make sure you've renewed your Iron Mouse subs, okay? Okay, okay. We cannot let, let Mousy fall. <laughs> we cannot. All right. Bitter brush, bitter brush, bitter brush. Thank you so much. Thank you, bitter brush. Thank you for your tip. Thank you for your tip, bitter brush, bitter brush, bitter brush. I don't think you had a message other than tarot reading, but. Tarot vibe check. You've got it. You've got it. Let's see what the cards have for. Bitter brush, bitter brush, bitter brush. Bitter brush. I love your name. It sounds like um. It kind of sounds like um like a My Little Pony, <laughs> but like cool, you know, like a cool My Little Pony. Bitter brush. Okay. okay. For you, we have Justice, the Six of Cups, and 
the lovers oh my goodness okay so this is an extremely libra reading extremely um we have justice a very karmic, very balanced. Ju justice, the lovers, and the six of cups. These are all sort of about reflection and balance and karma. Reflection, balance, and karma. Super holistically, like, thematic here. Um, so, because we have all of these cards and especially the Six of Cups, I think that this is about self-reflection, Bitter Brush, um, and a sense of justice within yourself, a sense of, um, I think, finally giving yourself what you deserve, okay? Bitter Brush, I think this is a reading about giving yourself what you deserve, and I think that it's a positive, something positive. I think that you have a opportunity now to give yourself the love that you know you deserve. I think that you finally have an opportunity to love your inner child. The Six of Cups is always about a sort of nostalgic childhood, um, like, uh, it's about nostalgia and childhood memories and, you know, what is sweet and old and past. And I feel like, Bitter Brush, there might be a version of you within yourself um, that didn't get enough love. And that's not necessarily like childhood you or baby you or teenage you or young adult you, but it, it's probably one of those things. You know, there is a version of you, some part of your past, that didn't get enough love. And I think that that part of you is a part of yourself that right now you have a really, really good opportunity to give that love to. Even though you are who you are today, that older part of you still lives inside of you and is still important. And today is your opportunity, tomorrow, the next day, to give that inside part of you the love that they deserve, okay? Love yourself, love yourself, love your inner child, give them hugs, give them comfort. Um, yes, that's fair. I've been fighting to return some spark to me since my work's been robbing a lot of that from me, so I'm getting a more healthy work-life balance and taking time to self-care. Ah, uh, yes, yes, definitely it is a good time for self-care. Let the whimsy out, indeed, indeed, indeed. Stay comfy, all right? Be gentle with yourself. And um, know that you deserve a lot, you know? You deserve a lot. Don't let people take, th take that away from you. You deserve a lot here. You deserve a lot. I'm feeling very orange. So I think we're gonna go with this light today. I'd love to give you a tarot reading. Absolutely. 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 Sleepy, do you have a favorite tarot deck? Probably the Anima Mundi tarot deck. Um, I do like all of the tarot decks that I own very, very much. I still do think that this one's my favorite, though. It's just... I mean, it, I feel very close to it. Um, where's my hermit? They mustn't be upside down. Sorry for the bonk. Um, uh, I feel very close to it. It's the deck that I learned mostly from. It's the first deck that I bought for myself. Um, and I think it's just like absolutely gorgeous. I love the gold leaves. I love the illustration. I like animal-based decks, which is what this is. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see what the cards have for the realm. Let's see what the cards have for the realm. 
And the King of Pentacles. This is a very graceful reading for Rome. Um, this is a, a time of prosperity and plenty that you are in charge of. You get to reap the benefits of a time of peace a time of peace for Rome. Um, and I think also this is because it's a peaceful time, um, there might also be a little bit of agitation at the lack of perceived greatness, if that makes sense. There's nothing for you to conquer here. There's no great feat for you to um, achieve. Um, there's nothing for you to become famous by, but nonetheless, you are the king in a time of prosperity, a king in a time of plenty, a beloved king for the people who you govern over. Um, and even if you are not some great, uh, war warrior, some great general. What is she doing up there? What is my cat doing all the way up there? Oh my goodness. What is happening? Oh no. <laughs> She's hunting inside my, um, inside my, my feather drawer. I have a feather in that drawer and she's just sticking her nose in it a little bit. Um, I hope she doesn't knock it down. That would be sad. That would be sad. How many feathers are in there? Not too, too many. I think just like three or four. Okay. She's not there anymore. Click. Chasey! Thank you. Thank you for your sad. Zero, shuk, four, shuk. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's see what else the cards have for for um, Farewell, Dan Wobbles. Have a good one. We have the Empress. Ooh, interesting. The Empress, the Five of Cups, and the Knight of Cups. Okay, so you're governing well in a time of peace for Rome. You're governing well in a time of peace. And I think your role here is the role of a healer, okay? I think your people, whoever they may be, your people... She's going crazy back there. <laughs> your people, Pharaoh, have gone through a lot of heartache and heartbreak. Um, I think you've brought them out at the time of famine. But there's still a lot of healing to be done. And that is what the Empress is, okay? The Empress is a quiet healer. A quiet healer. One who heals with love and affection and um, kind of long-term trust, reliability, attachment, unconditional love, okay? Unconditional love, unconditional love. So I think that your role here as the ruler is to be the cornerstone, the cornerstone of the people, the rock.
leadership in stillness, Pharrell. Leadership in stillness. Leadership in stillness. Then we also have the Knight of Cups, which is an encouragement to wear your heart on your sleeve. To love bravely and widely. You must love bravely and widely, Pharrell. has for Pharaoh. We have rebirth. You are going to mark the beginning of a new cycle of healing for your people, Pharaoh. I don't know who your people are. I don't know if this is your tribe at work. I don't know if it's a hobby group or um, a friend group or what exactly it is, but the people in your inner circle I think that you are, you are a healer to them, a healer to them, and your sort of healing superpower is truly just your consistency. People can trust you to be there and to be open. People can trust your heart to be good. You are reliable and strong and... <sighs> That is what they need. People who've gone through instability don't always need a savior. They just need a sailor. <laughs> I don't know. There's there is some kind of wordplay that could be good there, okay? They just need someone who's always going to be there. <laughs> not a savior, but a... Not a savior, but a... Tailor. Sailor. Mailer. Trailer. I don't know. Not a savior, but a mailer. <laughs> the UPS never misses a day, okay? That's all I'm saying. Partner doesn't rhyme. We're looking for a rhyme here, but that's okay. I think you get the idea, girl. Be the sailor, not the savior. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm no trailer. You're a trailer to me, Pharaoh. An aviator? Maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me read for you. I hope it resonated a little bit, and I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. It was insightful, thanks. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. A caver? Jailer? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. No Punaga, no Punaga, no Punaga. Can you do some brain scratching for the chat? You know, I don't have my main brain scratching microphone tool here with me today, but I can do my best to do something similar. I'll experiment a little bit. No, I don't like that. What do you prefer? And this question is only for Nobunaga, okay? Nobunaga, which one do you prefer? This? Or... This? And here, while we do this, we'll do your word redeem for Scoochabooch, Scoochabooch. Thank you for being patient, Scoochabooch. Scoochabooch. 
good news I've decided that I'm probably not gonna get a house <laughs> for a while because um, renting prices for houses are just too bad where I am right now so I'm probably going to get an apartment that is nicer than the one that I have right now. And um, it's probably going to be a place that I only stay at for hopefully a, just around another year. And then maybe I will have saved enough to feel comfortable renting a house. Have you been looking for apartments already? I had been looking at renting houses, um, but I just haven't, I literally just, I've been looking for like six months now and I, ha I just haven't been able to find anything. That is a reasonable price. Um, but there are some pretty good apartments near me that are a definite step up from where I am and um, in a more reasonable price range and I'm touring one tomorrow and I'm very excited I also hate moving but it is part of life <laughs> I have moved almost every year since I've been 17. There's been a couple places, maybe the average is more like every two years by now. Um, I'm pretty tired of moving, <laughs> but um, I think it will be good. I think it will be good because my current place is just so, so so very bad <laughs> for so many reasons <laughs> and um i'm really excited to get out of here even if it is another apartment um and <sighs> that might be happening sooner rather than later if I do end up getting this apartment that I'm looking at tomorrow, I'll be able to move in before the end of April, which is super exciting, super exciting. Even though I hate moving, I also like like being moved, you know what I mean? I like, I don't like moving out of the old place, but I do kind of like moving into a new place. <laughs> and I'm excited to figure out my new space and I will have room to do a lot more things. I mean, in this new apartment, I'm going to have more than one, more than, more than two rooms. In this apartment that I'm in right now, I have two rooms. I have this room and then I have like my little bedroom. But in my new apartment, I have so, I'm gonna, I would have, if I do move into this place, I would have so many more opportunities to like do different setups for ASMR videos. I even have, I would even have like a little balcony so I could do some stuff outside. Um, I could do, I just, I could just have so much space and more space means more variety in my videos, more setups. Um, and that, that is very exciting for me. So I'm excited. ASMR room incoming. This is basically my ASMR room. I basically have an ASMR room and a bedroom. <laughs> so, 
ASMR without background noises. I'm sure there will be some. It's still an apartment building, but it's gonna be much less. Much less, much less. Worst thing about moving? <sighs> Probably just like moving the big stuff, right? Like moving the bed and the bookshelves and the, he the heavy stuff, the desk. Just moving the big stuff is, is always hard. I, I don't have any friends with like, um, like open bed, like trucks so i don't think i have anyone who can help me like move the big stuff i'll probably have to get like one of those little u-hauls or something for my my bed and my bookshelf and my desk and like the big the big stuff you know um the boxes of books i don't mind it like obviously it's heavy but like it doesn't require like renting a whole u-haul or anything you know what i mean <laughs> um but yeah, um, that's probably the most nerve-wracking thing for me, just moving the big stuff, moving the big stuff. Click, scoot a boot, 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 scoot a boot. The best thing about moving? I love reading. Very much. The twenty twenty five forerunner. Aren't the older ones better? I don't know. I've heard a lot of good things about the third gens. You know what? I have a confession. I think the new Broncos are kind of cute. I've been looking at these new Broncos lately, and I've been like, yo, those are kind of cute though. But I feel like they're kind of cringe. But I kind of think they're cute. super, super corroded. If I had to guess, it's probably like, maybe from the 70s? 70s or 80s? It's really old. It's really old. Um, but it looks so cool. And whenever I was little, it, it was still running. And, um, I'll never forget just those, like, the fabric of the seats, and they had, like, stripes on the seats. Have you considered doing a restoration? I mean, I would love to, but I don't think I could. It's, like, rusted on the outside to the point where it's, like, corroded. Like, the hood has, like, like, it's been, it's been outside in hurricanes for, like, 20 years. It's, like, really rough. <laughs> I don't think I could restore it. Um... It would need to be, um, I would need, I would basically just need to hire someone else to restore it, um, and they, they, they would have to have a lot of expertise. Yes, the Ford Bronco. It's old and it's green, it's like green with like a white top, um, and it has like, I don't, I don't know what fabric the, 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 the chairs are, but they're like an old Man, it's such a cool car. Such a cool car. What do you look for when renting a new place? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm just so popular today. Um, what do I look for when renting a new place? So, the thing that was in, that's a must for me right now, I have two musts. In-unit washer-dryer. I've been living without a washer dryer in my unit since 2021 
May of 2021, and I am tired of it. I am tired of it. I want my own washer dryer, <laughs> so washer dryer, um, and AC, AC, because Oregon is, you know, starting to turn into a very hot place because of, um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. You've been living without AC? I've also been living without AC, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Since I've been in Oregon, which has been rough. Do you make a room just for streaming? I'm not sure. I'm touring the place tomorrow, and I, I'm, I don't need a room just for streaming. A room just for ASMR would be nice, both streaming and recording. Um, but um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I need to look at the place. Because sometimes you can like make a room out of a place that's not technically a room. You know, you can sometimes like cut a room in half and make it a room, a streaming room, even though it's technically half a room. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see. But I would, I would definitely make a space just for streaming and just for making ASMR, that's for sure. All right, a little sharky, a little sharky. Congratulations on being almost legend. My MMR is... 7,000... Uh, I think I'm around 7,200 right now. I think it might actually be 7,179 or something like that. I, I've dropped a little bit. I've dropped a little bit. My peak was like 1,000... Or not 1,000... 7,340 or something. Battlegrounds is the only Hearthstone I play now, <laughs> but let's name Little Sharky, Little Sharky, Little Sharky in 10 languages if we can. English, Shark, Spanish, Tiburon, Korean, Sango, Japanese, Same, Polish, Reikin, French, Hebrew, Tarish, Gaelic, Shiork, Italian, Squalo, 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 Squalo. German, Haifish, Haifish, Haifish. Thank you, Pearl. Haifish, 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 Haifish. Sleepy, you even remembered them in the same order as earlier. <laughs> Underscore, 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 underscore. Thank you, King Crimson. Thank you. Skippity verse. 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 Skippity
skibbity riz. Skibbity riz. Riz a riz a riz, rizzalicious. Skip it a skip a delicious, rizzalicious, ripple ripplelicious dishes. I just forgot. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. <laughs> before movie. That is true. That is true. You are ringing bells. I don't think I recommended it, but I am familiar with its existence. Yes, you've rung the bells. When you hum, do you have a song in mind? Nope. I just hope for the best. <laughs> All right, for Nobunaga, 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 we have a word up for Tiburoncito, 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 Tiburoncito. Just Jamie Dodger, thank you, thank you for your sub, thank you for your ten months. Hope you have a heckin' great stream, sleeps, you deserve the best night of chill vibes. Let's 
tiburoncito 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 do you have a favorite song to hum? no, not really tiburoncito 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 Pyrosocial. We had some camera movements. Camera movements. Look at my cat. Look at her. Gloom. Gloom show. I gotta scooch a booch myself back into position over here. Spiders crawling up your back, bite you, bite you. Worms crawling down your back. Spiders crawling up your back, bite you, bite you. Worms crawling down your back. Spiders crawling up your back, bite you, bite you. Worms crawling down your back. Spiders, 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 spiders. Crawling 
crack an egg on your head, let the yolk drip down, yolk drip down, let the yolk drip down, crack an egg on your head, let the yolk drip down, let the yolk drip down, let the yolk drip down, spiders crawling up your back. Do some intense light triggers. Stitching, 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 stitching. Follow the light and think. Floor rock. The floor rock. The floor rock belongs on the floor. The floor rock. The floor rock. The floor rock. need to master this. How to get the light clean around the sphere. <laughs> Why is it so difficult? So difficult? Why is it so difficult? <laughs> the light doesn't shine on the cork.
and for Destructicon. Ceiling Rock. Ceiling rock, ceiling rock, ceiling rock, ceiling rock, ceiling rock, floor rock. Sorry for bonking you with my ears. Oh no, my hair. <laughs> ceiling rock, ceiling rock. Oh, it's tangled. No, no. School of Rock, School of Rock, School of Rock, School of Rock. Welcome to the School of Rock. Welcome to the School of Rock. Welcome to the School of Rock. Welcome. Which student in School of Rock did you relate to? Huh? Which one was you? Which one, which one of those students was you? Which one? Jack Black, are you, are you all serious? What, all of y'all were Jack Black? <laughs> None of y'all identified as one of the students? Oh my goodness. What a chat. What a chat. What a chat. Welcome, Arvnero. Welcome, welcome. Welcome in, welcome in. For Destructicon, we have another word request for darkness. In Nocturne's voice. It was like a whoosh darkness and then a boom 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 you're getting ganked, you're getting ganked and sliced and diced into a million places you can't do nothing about it unless you're Jana Jana? Jana? when I play Jana, no one's Nocturne doesn't stand a chance okay? when I play Jana, actually no one stands a chance no one is more protected from anything than when I play Jana, okay? Easy peasy, easy peasy Nocturne counter, okay? Just Sona alt and you're even safer than- Untrue, okay? No, not true. You can- cause with Jana, like, you can do so many things. You can slow, you can tornado, you can alt. Um. The only thing that isn't a direct Nocturne counter is the shield. Every single one of Janna's other abilities is such an easy way to counter Nocturne, okay? And the shield does help. It's just not like a direct counter, but it helps. That's why you kill the Janna first though? Mm, yes, yes, Pandu, chase the Janna. Please. Please chase the Janna. I invite you to chase the Janna. Chase them all around the jungle. Please. Please. Go ahead. Just keep chasing. Just keep chasing. Who do you think has better escapes between Nami and Janna. 
I think Jana, but chasing Nami is also a pretty bad idea. You never want to chase the fish, but... I mean, chasing Bard is also pretty dumb. <laughs> Bard is also... Ah, escaping is just so fun. I just love making junglers waste their time on me. It's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite things. Shaka, 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 shaka. Shaka, shaka, shaka. Domain expansion, tingly tingly. Very good, Nobunaga. Tingly tingly, 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 jingly jingly. Tingly, tingly, jingly, jingly, tingly, tingly, jingly, jingly, tingly, tingly, shk, tingly, 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 I forgot. I forgot. Thank you for the reminder, because I did want to listen to that. By the way, Sleep, have you seen Lily in League? Um, so I stopped playing League before Lilia became a thing. She was- I came back to League for a while while she was a thing, but I'm not super familiar with Lilia. I don't know, like, what her abilities are and stuff. I kind of forgot. But I did get that comment a couple times on my video. Um, that it was Lilia, that, that it reminded them of Lilia. So I get it. I get it. Unfortunately, I have to go, even though I just got here. I've used too much data. Aw, farewell, Jam. Farewell. She's a Formula One race car, but she's a Fawn Deer Centaur. Interesting. Interesting. Does she have digi legs? Does Lilia have digi legs? Digi legs. Yeah? Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Look at the, the digiest. Good. Speaking of the digiest, I guess what I'm thinking of is digestion. Um, last night I had a dream that I was touring a house that had like the, these crazy fruit trees in the back that grew like big, soft persimmons. But the persimmons were like this big. They were like like pineapple sized persimmons and they were kind of like teardrop shaped I guess and they were I was they were like everywhere and I was like oh my god I want there's so many persimmons here but the landlord that was giving me the tour was this really creepy strange person who was like scary like they were giving me like like danger vibes, like they might attack me kind of vibes. <laughs> like I was scared. They were bad news. And the conflict of my dream was like, is it worth it to have a dangerous landlord if I get like this entire persimmon orchard with the house? <laughs> that was the big question of the dream. Is, are the giant persimmons worth this creepy landlord? Um, Hmm. I don't think I made a decision by the end of the dream. I implore you to try the persimmons. That's kind of how it felt. It felt like I was like maybe eating fairy food and like once you eat fairy food, you never come back, you know? You know what I mean? You would have done if it was apples, wouldn't you have? Probably so. Probably so. Trade deal. You get persimmons and you also get a dangerous land. When picking a place to move, is the landlord a deal breaker for you? Um, they're not a 
a deal breaker, but they are important for sure. For sure, they are important. I took a nap today and dreamt that a serial killer was after me, so that was fun. Nice. Don't eat the food from the Feywild, exactly. It's a very important lesson. You must be safe. You must not eat the food from the Feywild. You must not step inside the fairy ring, or the fairies will sweep you up and you'll be lost forever. If you eat fairy food, nothing will be so sweet again. All other food will disgust you, and you will either starve yourself because you crave the fey food so much, or you will go off yourself to live with the fairies and be their pet. find the perfect place, but the landlord is the same as in your dream, would you move in anyways? It depends on my security network, where I am. Like, if I'm complete, if I were, like, moving to, like, Montana, and I know no one in Montana, and I have no connections, and I'm moving into a cabin in the middle of nowhere, and it's a perfect cabin, but there's a creepy landlord, probably no. Probably no probably know. But if I'm moving into, like, a neighborhood where, like, I know my neighbors and there's a creepy landlord, but, like, I'm also, like, right next to, like, you know, the fire station and, um, the police station <laughs> and, um, the schools and there's, like, a, there's, like, people around and there's, like, grocery stores and pharmacies um, and I have a creepy landlord, I'm less afraid, because there's, like, you know, if I call 911, there will be people here quickly. <laughs> exactly. Actual civilization. Civilization goes a long way for protection, okay? Um, yeah. And, like, when it comes to being attacked, which is, like, the vibe in my dream, so, like, a creepy landlord, whatever, I've had landlords that are, like, very, very weird before, like, probably a little bit socially, uh, like, they probably have some, like, social, various different social disorders, um, and that's fine, like, I don't care, they're good landlords, they're just, like, very, like, awkward, um, I've also had landlords that are, like, mean, but, like, good, and that's fine, they're good, they're, they answer the phone, they get the maintenance done, they it's fine. Like, that's fine. But, like, a creepy landlord? A landlord that you can't trust? A landlord that you feel like is, like, deliberately trying to screw you over every chance they can? Um, that's probably, like, not worth it, you know? Probably not worth it. Shook, 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 shook. I once had a landlord that would flirt with me, needless to say, didn't stay there very long. Yeah, fair. Have y'all heard of tipping landlords? No, 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 no. And I n never will. Because if anyone says that, I will not hear them. <laughs> I will just kindly not hear that thing that they said. What? No. I've never heard of tipping landlords. Nope. Nope. Never heard of it. Sorry. Nope. Unfamiliar with the concept. with that Destructicon, maybe they will get some cookies, alright? I feel like I dipped them quite enough already. Yeah, I will say, like, in Louisiana, Louisiana has a lot of economic problems that Oregon doesn't have, but there are many things that I preferred about living in Louisiana to living in Oregon, and one of them was just that um, my rent never increased in Louisiana. I don't know if that was just like a me being lucky thing. I'm pretty sure the apartments I was in were not like rent controlled or anything, but my rent never increased, and I lived at some places for like two years. 
but in Oregon, every single time I've gone over my lease, um, my, like, they, they take the first opportunity they can to increase rent, you know? Uh, res G, thank you for your sub, thank you, thank you, thank you, res G, thank you, R, click, click, E, sh, k, Z, C, H, click, I, s, k, thank you, res, 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 would you ever consider move, consider moving back to Louisiana? I would definitely consider it. Probably not South Louisiana, just because of climate issues. But um, I would I would totally consider moving to like. I guess I should clarify. I probably wouldn't move to deep South Louisiana where I'm from, but I might move to what is considered South Louisiana by normal standards. <laughs> um, but I'm from like South South, and I would maybe settle for like South instead of South South. <laughs> hello, Veronica Rose. Welcome, readers. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in, welcome in. Hello, hello. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, readers. So nice to meet you all. My name is Sleepy, and I make ASMR on Twitch and on YouTube. It's very nice to meet you all. Very nice to meet you. that's going to get flooded in the near future. Um, south, south, south Louisiana? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's already getting flooded seasonally, for sure. But do you still enjoy visiting the city you grew up in? Or do you just go there because family is there? Um, I definitely enjoy visiting, but, like, it literally just won't be there for long, so, like, I probably wouldn't move there. But even if I moved, like, um, to the same, like, latitude as, like, New Orleans. I probably wouldn't want to live in New Orleans, but even if I moved to, like, the same latitude as New Orleans along that line, but maybe a little bit more central, that would be significantly more safe than, like, where I grew up. Um, and that's still considered, like, South Louisiana, um, I would say, but north, it's north of where I live. It's like an hour, an hour or two north of where I, where I grew up. Um, New Orleans, so. Just going a couple miles north makes a big difference. It makes decades of difference when it comes to, like, how long it, it will not be the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> what part of New Orleans? I didn't live in New Orleans. I lived, like, a couple hours south of New Orleans. you been? How have you been? Ego, 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 ego. Here's your name, Trace. I G click. U S K X click. D S K underscore. Shuka, shuka, shuka. Just 
busy with finals and not wanting to study, that's super fair. Good luck on your finals. I hope that it all goes very, 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 very well. Can you organize my code for me? I don't know what that means, Destructicon. Uh, what? <laughs> maybe, maybe I can, maybe I can't. Maybe I can, or maybe I can't. Were beignets part of the gastronomy where you lived? Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Probably my favorite regional food from LA. That's fair, that's fair. the new video are you gonna do more vids like that in the future um i don't like remaking vid videos exactly but like also i feel like all of my videos have certain elements of that so like kind of yes kind of no i will make videos like that for sure yes but i probably will not be remaking you know that exact concept <laughs> Pyrosocially is your name, Trace. P click Y sk R sk O sk S O sk C I dot A L Pyro Pyro Pyrosocially click click one sk. Anyone got fun builds for Cyberpunk? I'm running a Santa Easton with Biako right now, and it's getting a little stale. Man, I can't remember the names of anything that I did in Cyberpunk. Wish I could help, but alas, I cannot. Soda planta, soda planta, soda planta. Hello, soda planta. Soda planta, soda planta, soda planta, soda planta. Soda Pilates. Anyang aseo. Yun, hello. You, you once mentioned that you may consider making a video on the outside. Is that still being considered, like during a walk or something? Um, it is still being considered, but I don't have any specific plans for it yet. But I do like outside videos. I just need to. Uh, Make sure I do it right. I think that giraffe would win against 80 10 year olds. Honestly, um, yeah, I think the giraffe would win. giraffes at scaling terrain like can can a giraffe um go up a rocky path 
a steep upward rocky path. Like, I'm sure they can't do what mountain goats do, but can they, like, I can't even imagine a giraffe, like, walking up, like, a rocky terrain. It seems like it would be difficult <laughs> for a giraffe. And I relate. I am, I'm not too good at walking up a rocky terrain as a silly bipedal human. They do not crave that mineral. It's true. They fall without walking on steep terrain. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Click, click. They're mainly adapted to plains and flat terrain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking too. But ten year olds are murderous, let's be for real. But ten year olds are dumb and very short. And giraffes are dumb but very tall. And they have a lot of ki they have way more strength. A giraffe has four legs that it can kick with really hard. Ten-year-olds have nothing that they can hit with really hard. <laughs> there is no limb that a ten-year-old can throw that will impact a giraffe. The, gir the giraffe won't care. The giraffe will just boop, kick a ten-year-old away. Are giraffes aggressive? They are not especially aggressive, but they are very jumpy, and their main kind of, like, instinctive scare, um, jump is, like, a back leg kick, um, and they actually will kick instinctively. It's almost like an overreactive thing. Sometimes they, like, kick their own babies, because their, like, babies sneak up on them, and they're like, ah, and then they, like, injure their own babies. Um, so giraffes, and th it's a, it's a hard kick. It's a hard kick. They got a hard kick. And yeah, they also will swing their neck. They'll like use their neck like um like a like a bludgeoning tool almost. Um and just the strength of their neck hitting you can be really hard, but also they're usually aiming with their horns, but they're just kind of bad at aiming. So um they are not aggressive, but they do they are very defensive and they can be like violently defensive. And yeah, they're massive. Absolutely massive. For high on ramens, we have a word wrap for petite, petite reikin, petite reikin, petite reikin, petite reikin, petite reikin. What about 100 unarmed man versus one silverback gorilla? I think the 100 unarmed men. Yeah, I think 100 unarmed men are pretty strong, you know? Um, one silverback gorilla is also pretty strong, but I don't think one silverback gorilla is 100 times stronger than a man. Um, 100 unarmed twitch chatters? Now that's a different story, Liko. That's a different story. I don't know about that one. us weak sleepy? Yes. All of you are weak and sleepy and tired and tingling in the brain. And you just want to relax, really. You just want to relax. You don't want to fight a silverback gorilla, do you? Don't you just want to 
cuddle up in bed and never move and never eat and never shower and never do anything but lay there and atrophy atrophy slowly and confidently loving yourself the whole goddamn time fight Jeff Bezos. You don't e- you're not even brave enough to fight Elon Musk. You're not even brave enough to fight Jake Paul 1v1. You think you could fight a silverback gorilla? Come on. Talk to me after you 1v1 Jake Paul, alright? Alright? fight that I want to see is Jake Paul versus a silverback gorilla. Okay? Can we make it happen? (laughs) Can we get them in the ring? Can we actually just have like, um, can we have like a boxing like tournament where we take all of the like richest men in the world and make them fight 1v1 a silverback gorilla? Like one at a time? I think that would be fun. We can we can have like um like the silverback gorilla against Elon Musk and then the silverback gorilla against Jeff Bezos and then the silverback gorilla against I don't even know the name of other rich people. Bill Gates <laughs> and then the silverback gorilla against Jeffrey Star <laughs> Pretty sure no human can 1v1 a gorilla. I know. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Can we make it with politicians? Yes. 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 Yeah, I think, in fact, you shouldn't be able to run for president unless you are youthful enough to fight a silverback gorilla. You know? Like, that takes Biden and and Trump out of the equation. (laughs) Neither of them can fight a silverback girl. (laughs) Um, I think it's a great solution. We'd end up with a president, probably, who's like 30 or under, that no one knows about. It'd be great. (laughs) It'd be great. (laughs) It would be the Jon Snow that we need, alright? The Jon Snow that we need. Thirty-five minimum age for president? Not anymore. Not with our new silverback gorilla ruling. Okay. Sleepy, I think that would result in no president ever. Oh no! <laughs> no president ever. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
a gorilla become president? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Noxier, Noxier, Noxier. Here's your word up. Noxier, 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 The real question is, which streamer famous person do you think you could beat in a boxing match? All of them. All of them all at once, all the time. Any day. Any day of the week. Okay? Name a streamer, I'll take him. I'll take him. Spooderman, here's your name trace. N O click disk underscore S P shk O shk O shk D click E shk R M shk A click N click one one nine. C E D T T V eight C E shuk D click D click D click B eight shuk Thank 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 I think some ASMR MMA could be fun. I just gotta, um, gotta wait for my arm to cover before I can throw any good punches, you know what I'm saying? It's good, good. Nox here, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your sub. Nox here. Thank you. 
We gotta work on your strike game and your ground game. The good thing is you can throw some mean leg kicks. It's true. It's true. I got them walking muscles, okay? I got them legs that go kapow. to assume that I haven't been conditioning my legs this whole time. You know? How many apples have you eaten today? Too many, pyrosocial. Too many. You couldn't handle the number, alright? You couldn't handle it if I told you. Sorry, I meant your bones. Oh, I know what you meant. You think I haven't been karate chopping my shins every day? Bold of you to assume. Have you been low kicking solid concrete walls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Noxier, that's very, very kind of you. Thank you. Can you keep a building down? I could keep down. Trump Tower. The only thing stopping me is that my legs aren't long enough from Oregon to New York. Okay? It's in New York, right? I don't even know if it's in New York. I think it's in New York. I could keep down Trump Tower, though. Very perceptive of you, Dolly. It is break time, and we have a perfect little break in conversation here. So I will go and take five-ish minutes, and then I will be back for two more hours of tingles, okay? I'll be back very soon. I'll be back, 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 back very soon. Back very soon, my friends.
Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hi, bro. Hi, CEO. Hi, Dali Joel. Hi, Destruct the Congo. Hello, Poster. Hello, Andre Su. Hello, KFC Serbia. Vorpal Matt, Green Ninja, and Olivia. Void Witch, Biosocial. Saki, 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 Caitlin, Emilion, 99. Buenas noches, Andres. All right, Saggy Sir. Let's see what the cards have for you. Let's see what the cards have for Saggy, 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 Saggy. Saggy, 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 Sir. Saggy, 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 Sir. reading um <laughs> i think saggy sir you are about to meet someone or come into closer contact with someone who maybe you already know who is going to begin being a major asset to your life um this could be in business this could be in personal life but i don't think that the connection here that we're talking about is necessarily primarily emotionally I feel like they're going to be an asset to your life materially. It's going to be like, you're going to find like the perfect babysitter. You're going to find the perfect assistant. You're going to find the perfect neighbor who can help you with your car problems. You're going to like, there's just going to be someone who adds a massive kind of value to your life who is going to be coming in soon. Um, and... Uh, I think that they're also going to be someone who you get along with, you know? Perfect Valorant duo. Exactly, exactly. The Ace of Pentacles is, I think, the value that they're adding to your life in a very, um, like, material way. They're going to be able to do something that helps you. They're going to be able to give you some kind of service or resource that helps you. It might be that, like, um, someone gives you an orange tree or something like that, you know what I mean? And then I also think that your meeting them is kind of going to be um, a chance encounter. It's not going to be like you were looking for the perfect babysitter, but like they find you at the grocery store, you know what I mean? And they're like, by the way, I babysit. And then they're like the perfect babysitter, you know what I mean? It like happens by chance, by serendipity, and it is perfect. And you're also going to get along them very very well that's that two of cups truly the stars are going to align align saggy sir and someone is going to fall into your life who just fits some kind of need that you have they fill some kind of gap that you have right now um and i think it's going to be massively beneficial for you so get excited get excited okay thank you for letting me read for you i hope that it resonated I you enjoyed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Pharaoh, what can I read for you? Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. You're very welcome, Saki. You're very welcome. Click, click. Sleepy, how do you laugh in Cajun? You give a good old knee slap and you go, hi. Hi. Or you say, hot dog. Oh, hot dog. Look at that. Are you, are you get a good, oh, got it on so. Got it on so. Well, got it on so. Which means look at that in Cajun French. Um, but sometimes you just say like, oh, got it on so. Sometimes you just say that. Hot dog. Hot dog. 
Do you need the knee slap? The knee slap is pretty important, okay? It's pretty important. Yeah, another one is like, God dang it. God dang it. Well, God dang it. Uh, sometimes you get an oh heck too. Oh heck is pretty common. Oh heck. Oh heck. I feel like oh heck is sometimes like, um, it's kind of when something bad but funny happens, doggone it. Same thing. It's like when something bad but funny happens, like when someone talks about like spilling paint all over themselves or something, you get like, oh heck, and you kind of laugh at them. Or yeah, god, doggone it, doggone it. Cradles by Suburban. Cradles by Suburban. Lyrics. I live inside my own world of make believe. <laughs> what the heck was that noise? <laughs> Whatever, moving on. <laughs> I think it, it, to me it sounded like a skateboard, maybe. Skateboard rolling by. Um, I live inside my own world of make-believe. Kids screaming in their cradles, profanities. I see the world through eyes covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. Why can't you just let me eat my weight in glee? I live inside my own world of make-believe, kids screaming in their cradles, profanities. Some days I feel skinnier than all the other days, some days I can't tell if my body belongs to me. I love everything, fires spreading all around my room, my world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. I want to taste your content, hold your breath and feel the tension. Devil's hide behind redemption. Honesty is a one-way gate to hell. I want to taste consumption. Breathe faster to waste oxygen. Hear the children sing aloud. It's music till the wick burns out. Hush. I just want to be carefree lately. Yes. Just kicking up daisies. Got one too many quarters in my pockets. Count them like the four-leaf clovers in my locket. Untied laces. Just tripping on daydreams. Got dirty little lullabies playing on repeat. Might as well just rot around the nursery and count sheep. Lovely. Nick Krillin, the three card terror redeem, is currently on. And we have one for JBSM. 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 Click. So let's see what the cards have for JBSM. 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 We have the Eight of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, and the Nine of Swords. JBSM, JBSM, Eight of Cups, Three of Pentacles. Nine of Swords. Ooh, JBSM. I don't think this is a good one. I think you might be about to do something that you might regret. Okay? I think you might be about to do something that you regret. Um, I feel like this... Um, I feel like you're getting exhausted by something, 
and you think that maybe the best thing is to kind of abandon ship and move on to something better, something that feels more productive, something that puts you in contact with different people. But I think that if you do that, if you abandon ship right now, you're going to regret it. You're gonna regret it, okay? Um, and I think there's kind of two solutions here, all right? Two pieces of advice that I have. One option for you is to stick with something and hope that it gets better. The other option is to move on anyway, to try and abandon ship and leave that thing, but just know that it's not going to be, it's not going to result in a perfect happy life. There will be hardships um, wherever you go, and it's always going to be a, a struggle, you know? Um, and I hope that that's not sk -tuk -tuk, too sk -sk -sk, too negative or too cynical. But you know, life keeps going, and new challenges keep coming, and the grass is always greener somewhere else, right? Um, and I think it's it's totally okay to move on and try something different, but just don't don't expect that it's all going to be rainbows and sunshine, you know? You you take yourself wherever you go take yourself wherever you go. So whenever things are shitty, sometimes sometimes all, all you can change to feel better is yourself, you know, and your own perspective. Um, sometimes that's not true. Sometimes, sometimes things are sh like legitimately shitty and if you get out of that situation then like things will be better, but I don't think that's the situation for you specifically right here at JDSM. I think that what you're going through, there can be comfort in knowing that what you're going through is normal, what you're going through is something that all humans struggle with, um, and also, um, you don't need to change the world. I think if you work on yourself, then things will, <coughs> things will feel better. Um, yeah. Setting boundaries is hard. But I believe in you, JBSM. You can be your own bad cop sometimes. You gotta play bad cop and good cop in life for yourself. Okay. I am glad that that resonated. Thank you for letting me read for you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Dominics, what can I read for you? Dominics, 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 Dominics. What can I read for you? Shush. Relax, relax, relax. Sleepy, are you aware that you're the goat? Am I? Am I the goat? Am I, am I the go at the cool? Earth rise, star set. I think the second half repeats so you can skip that. Okay, let's see. Earth rise, star set, lyrics. I push my feet to the edge. I look and I face my world, this lonely scene, I take it in, it's hard to say where all of it begins and I end, and I waited for the sky to change, but oh, it never did, and I almost dropped my head and lost my faith, then I saw you from a distance, you were worlds away, oh, but you had me from the vision, I never looked away again, I still fall for you like suns do for skies, cerulean pouring in from your eyes, just a hollow moon that you colorized, so powerful. I feel so small but so alive, like watching the earth rise. I walk these streets of loneliness, a tranquil sea on all horizons, this empty scene of might-have-beens. I stare at starless skies that call me, and I still wish. I still wish. I still wish. I still wish. 
Ah, that is beautiful. I really liked that. I really liked that. I really liked that. I also want to listen to that song. I need to, I need to listen to some things on Spotify tonight. For real, what was the name of the one yesterday that I read that I wanted to listen to? What was the name of the one yesterday that I wanted to listen to? I can't remember it. the flowers. Thank you so much. I'm not gonna forget it this time. I'm not gonna forget it. Sk, sk, sk. All right. Now we have a tarot redeem for Seb. Seb. Seb Esquin. Seb Esquin. Sk, sk, sk. Seb. 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 one also isn't too good. Sebastian, be careful with your savings. Be careful with your savings. Um, I feel like, I feel like you have some kind of resource, some kind of savings, and you're like so ready to like redeem yourself of them, almost, if that makes sense. I feel like, um, you are like You've been waiting to, like, give your inheritance to a charity. You've been waiting to, like, give this gift to your true love, your grandma's wedding ring to your true love and ask them to marry you. You've been waiting to, like, there's, like, this thing that you have that is really wonderful that you know you should save, but you also have been, like, really looking forward to, like, giving up, if that makes sense. And I think that you're going to feel the urge to give that up soon, to give that ring to someone, to give that inheritance to someone, to use the entire sourdough starter for some wild reason, but you shouldn't, okay? It's not time. It's not time yet, Sebastian. You need to wait. You need to wait because I think it would feel good in the moment for you to give that thing away, for you to kind of relieve you yourself of the burden of uh, the responsibility of that thing, but it's not time yet. It is just not time yet. There will come an opportunity later that is perfect. I'm about to purchase a house. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, Sebasquin. Wait, wait. Let me, let me give you a little bit. Let me give you a little disclaimer here. <laughs> it might not be the house. <laughs> I hope it's not the house. Um, look, we'll give you some bonus. We'll give you some bonus cards. Maybe we'll, um, maybe we'll get some clarity here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do feel like there's just some kind of really big decision that would feel good to make in the moment, but it's like, mm, not the right thing to do, almost. It's like, you need to keep holding on, you need to keep saving, you need to keep, you need to just wait a little bit longer. Maybe it's like, you know, in a couple months, that same house will be like $200,000 cheaper or something crazy. The bubble's gonna pop. Who knows? Who knows? Let's see. Sebastian, Sebastian, what do the cards have for Sebastian? Revival. Revival. What does this mean? Revival.
interesting. So, I don't know if you're about to buy like a fixer upper. This could be a message that um, it's going to be a lot harder than you think it is. It's going to be like a lot more work than you expect this house, but that you do indeed have the ability to revive it to a sort of glory. And uh, in the end, you will be proud and it will be beautiful, but it's just going to be way more labor and time and financially intensive than you expect. So you might, it might not be a tale of regret exactly, but kind of a tale of like, um, just <sighs> realizing that you were a fool for thinking it would be as easy as you think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a lot harder than you think it is. It's going to be a lot harder than you think it is, and it's going to be a heavy burden. And it might be the kind of decision that is impossible to regret in the same way that, like, it's kind of impossible to regret college, but also it puts you in, like, it can put you in, like, $40,000 of debt. <laughs> but it's, like, hard to regret college because, like, you do get so much education and you might make really good friends and you might, like, make all these connections and it might set you up for the world. But also, like, shouldn't it be cheaper than $40,000 of debt? So it's like you can't bring yourself to regret it, but also, like, every now and then I want you wonder what it would have been like if that didn't happen. <laughs> and that might be the kind of thing that you're, that you're getting into now, where it's like, you might not regret it, but it is going to be um, a lot more complicated than you expect. A lot more complicated than you expect. Good luck, Sebastian. I wish you the best. I wish you the best. Thank you for letting me read for you. I hope it resonated. I hope it gave you something to think about. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, 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 thank you. Click, 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 click. Shaka, shaka, shaka. Also, Nox here. Thank you so much for your tip. Thank you so much for your coffee tip. I appreciate it. Interesting, interesting. Christina T, I think there is a secret that you can use strategically. I think it is an important secret. Or it might not be a secret, but it's some kind of hidden knowledge. Hidden knowledge that you have. And I think you 
you can handle it very well if you use that knowledge at the right time. Um, I feel like there's going to be kind of like a trigger event soon. Um, a trigger event soon. Brought about by this Wheel of Fortune. And it's going to be um, like the perfect opportunity for you to wield this knowledge um, in a way that helps you uh, maintain your power. Maintain your power, okay? Sebastian, thank you. Thank you for your sub. S E B click A S click Q U I dot A N Thank you. I have something in my eye and it's killing me. I'm literally dying right now. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Uh, I think I'm okay. Uh, I think I'm okay. I survived. Alright, Christina T. There's more to this. I was just interrupted by my eye crisis. <laughs> um, yes, I think that there is going to be a triggering event. And I think that you um, are and have been waiting patiently. Waiting patiently to use this secret. I don't know if you've watched Game of Thrones, but I'm kind of getting Game of Thrones-y vibes here. There's a lot of very patient people in Game of Thrones who've been, like, sitting on secrets for, like, 20 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? They've been, like, keeping some incredibly important secret for, like, 20 frickin' years. You have watched Game of Thrones? Okay, yeah. So the Queen of Swords is a strategist. And I think an important part of being a strategist is knowing when you should keep a secret, not because it's dangerous yet, but because it could give you power in the future, if that makes sense. Like, sometimes, sometimes knowledge ages like wine, um, and something that means nothing today could mean a kingdom in 20 years, you know? And I think there's just some bit of knowledge that you know that no one else knows, and it's something that maybe feels or felt inconsequential, but there's going to be a moment where that knowledge is power, where that knowledge is the thing that can get you, um, something. I don't know what. I don't know what. It, it could be, um, some kind of alliance. It could be, um, blackmail. It could be, it could be anything. I'm not sure, but there's some important knowledge that you have, and it's going to age like wine, okay? So keep it secret. Keep it secret in the cellar of your soul. Keep it secret in the cellar of your soul. And one day, that knowledge will be power, okay? Thank you for letting me read for you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it resonated a little bit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a fun one. Yaknosa, what can I read for you? What can I read for you? Yaknosa, yaknosa, yaknosa. our words, we used what words we had to weld, what words we had wielded, kneeled, we knelt and wept, we wrung the wet, the sweat, 
We racked our lips, we rang for words to ward off sleep, to warn, to want ourselves, to want the earth we mouthed it, wound our vowels until it fit. It fits the earth we mounted, roused and rocked, we harped, we yawned and tried to yawp, and tried to fix, affixed, we facted, felt. We fattened, fanfared, anthemed, hammered, felt the words worth stagnate, snap in half in heat, the wane, the melt, what words we hoarded, halved, and wholly porous. Meanwhile tide, still tide, and we still washed for sounds to mark and mark. Holy hot heck. Oh, Fiaknosa, that one's fun. Franny Choi, I think I've read something before by them. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. I loved that one. We used our words. We used what words we had to weld. What words we had, we wielded, kneeled, we knelt, and wept. We wrung the wet, the sweat. We racked our lips. We rang for words to ward off sleep, to warn, to want ourselves. To want the earth, we mouthed it, wound our vowels until it fit. It fits the earth we mounted, roused and rocked. We hopped, we yawned and tried to yawp, and tried to fix, affixed, we facted, felt. We fattened, fanfared, anthemed, hammered, felt the words worth stagnate, stop in half in heat, the wane, the melt, what words we'd hoarded, halved and wholly porous. Meanwhile, tide still tied, and we still washed for sounds to mark and marked. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Alliteration going crazy. So true. So true. All right. But let's do some. Visual triggers for Pyro So Shook. Visual, visual, visual triggers for Pyro So Shook. I need a stream of sleepy spitting bars. <laughs> Then King George turns around, runs a spending spree. He ain't ever gonna set his descendants free, so there won't be a revolution in this century. Enter me, he says in parentheses. Don't be shocked when your history books mention me. I will lay down my life if it sets us free. Eventually, you'll see my ascendancy. After I take a sip, 
a sippy sip of my drinky drink. Yum. Okay. Let's see what the cards have for Nick Krillin. 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 Krillin, Nick, Krillin, Nick, Krillin. We have the Eight of Shuka. Eight of Wands. Six of Swords. And the Page of Swords. Click Eight of Wands, Six of Swords, Page of Swords. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Nick Krillin. I'm getting like running away energy. I'm getting like running away from something energy. Um, but I don't think it's a bad thing. It's kind of like Moana vibes. I don't know if you've seen Moana Nick Krillin, but she kind of like runs away in order to save her people. Like she is running away because there's issues at home um, and it's something that other people don't understand. People don't get her, they disapprove of her. So she's kind of running away, but she's also like doing it for her family and for her people. I have not only snippets, I wonder if there's another good analogy here. Running away for your people, running away for your family. Um, is there a Greek myth that's like this, where you run away for your people? Mulan? Mulan? Mulan is totally a good example, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think that there's a journey, a journey for you. Oh no, add, okay. We will be patient. We will wait. Welcome back, Nick Krillin. Welcome back, welcome back. Um, yes, Mulan is a good example. I think that there's a fantastic journey, a fantastic journey coming up for you. And I think it's going to be something that um, changes your life pretty quickly and changes the lives of um, people close to you. It's going to be a pretty life-changing sort of thing. That changes, um, it's, yeah, just like massive changes. Nick Krillin, thank you. Thank you for your sub. Thank you, Nick Krillin. And click I dot C K sh sh K K click click R sh K I dot double L double L double L double L sh K I sh K N sh K. Anytime I do double letters, double L, double T, I always think about that goose in Charlotte's Web, the old cartoon, the old cartoon, Charlotte's Web, who's like, I double T, double S, I don't even remember what they're spelling. What are they even spelling? I don't even remember the word, but they say like, double this, double that, double this, double that. <laughs> Is it Mississippi? M I double S I no, it's not Mississippi. What are they spelling? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Tennessee. T E double N E double S double E. Maybe. I can't remember. It matters not, it matters not. But Nick Krillin. Is it Connecticut? C O double N E C T I C U T No, not enough doubles. Not enough doubles. Um, I, I actually think Mulan is like a great example of the vibes of this reading. I think that you are going on a journey in order to um, repair something at home, okay? 
I think you're going on a journey in order to repair something at home, and you're kind of having to break the rules to do it, and it's going to be a coming-of-age story for you, but also sort of a coming-of-age story for your home base, your culture. Um, so to take it out of the kind of like cultural context of Mulan, this could easily be something like um, taking a class in another degree program that is maybe like a controversial move for you and your degree program, but you're able to use knowledge from, you know, the kinesiology department and take it into the physical theater department and like make a lot of productive changes. Or, I don't know, from like graphic design into math. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything that's not theater. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think you're, you're going to be able to do something a little bit controversial and take that knowledge back to your home base and you're going to go through, grow through this journey and you're also going to enhance your, this, the space that you come from after coming back from this journey. Does that make sense? It could also be something to do with family. I'm just saying like, it could kind of, it could be a family thing. It could be a work thing. You know, uh, maybe you take a break from working at your job and you go work with their competitor or you go work within like an adjacent industry, but then you come back and you like, you give them some of the secrets, you know what I'm saying? Or you um, leave your job. This is actually something that a lot of cooks do. They leave their line cook job that they love in order to go get a culinary degree, which can kind of be seen as like shitty or it can be seen as good, depending on where you're from, but then they come back and they end up having a lot of productive knowledge and they end up being able to make it to Top Chef and like actually taking this mom and pop shop, and shop into being like a three star whatever um, restaurant. Um, so yeah, I feel like you're, you're like leaving a space and doing something a little controversial that benefits you and also benefits the space in the long run, okay? The bear? I don't know that. I don't know that. Thank you for letting me read for you. I hope that resonates in some way. I hope it means something to you. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've been thinking of going back to school for my comp sci degree. Very nice. Very nice. All right, now for King Sean Beats, we have a word wrap for crumbled cookies in the kitchen cabinet. I believe there are crumbled cookies in the kitchen cabinet. Crumbled cookies in the kitchen cabinet. <gasps> are there crumbled cookies in the kitchen cabinet? Are there crumbled cookies in the kitchen cabinet? Are there crumbled cookies in the kitchen cabinet? Crumbled cookies in the kitchen cabinet? Favorite cookie? Ginger molasses. Crumbled cookie in the kitchen cabinet. Crumbled cookies 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 in the kitchen cabinet. Click. Hello, isolated. Hello, isolated matrix. How you doing? I'm doing swell. Crumble cookies in the kitchen cabinet. Crumble every cookie in the kitchen cabinet. If there's a whole cookie in the kitchen cabinet, you will be disciplined. If I find one whole cookie in the kitchen cabinet, you best crumble it. You best crumble it without argument. Without argument. Nope. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear any complaints. I don't want to hear any this. I don't want to hear any that. I want you to crumble the cookies in the kitchen cabinet. Crumble them. Crumble them. What if you find enough crumbles to make one cookie? I don't care as long as they're crumbled, okay? I don't care. Just crumble those god dang cookies. Crumble them. They must be crumbled. If those cookies aren't crumbled, you will be humbled. Do 
you understand? Do you understand? If those cookies aren't crumbled, you will be humbled. Shp. Watch out. Shp. Okay, pasta John, time for your tarot reading. Let's see what we got. Shk. Let's see what the shk cards have for pasta John. Pasta John. Pasta John. Shk. Pasta John. We've got the Ace of Swords. The Seven of Swords. And the Knight of Swords. Pasta John, you're a little thinker. You're a little thinker thinker, aren't ya? You're a little thinker thinker with your little brainy brain. A little thinker, a little thinker, 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 thinker. You've got all kinds of words in your head. Um, Pasta John, you have a good idea, okay? You have a very, 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 very good idea. And I think that this idea is, in fact, a strategy. A strategy. And you must keep these cards close to your chest, alright? Because this good idea you have, you can weaponize it, and it will bring you to victory. You have, like, a new chess play that the world has never seen before. You have in your noggin, Pasta John, you have um like just a winning a winning idea. You have a new debate strategy. You have a very good idea. And I think that you can weaponize it. Weaponize it. I think that this is a um reading truly about like winning some kind of combat or some kind of argument, some kind of um, conflict with your good ideas, with your good ideas that no one else has. And I think that whenever you finally think of them, it's going to feel like a revelation. It's going to be like, I know the perfect ingredient to put in this soup that will win me the big soup award or the pasta award. I have a new noodle idea. Maybe you're going to make a new noodle shape. That would be pretty cool. A new pasta shape, I should say. Maybe you're going to make a new pasta shape. That is just so, so precious and so perfect that it complements its sauce in the most uh, magical culinary way ever that no one has ever imagined before. And you're going to win the big pasta award of the world gonna make the best pasta because of your magic pasta shape. I don't know what that idea is, Pasta John, but you've got a winning idea. So don't forget to win with it, alright? Don't be afraid to be aggressive. Be aggressive. The Knight of Swords is not afraid to fight. Thank you for letting me read for you. I hope that resonated <laughs> in some way. <laughs> hope that meant something to you. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Yes. Shake your desk. Shake, shake your desk. I hope the camera does not the fall. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. One day, one day the camera is going to fall. And that would suck. That would suck. Next, we have a reading for Dominic's. 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 What do the cards have for Dominic's? Dominic's. Yes, Dominic's. You just let me know 
Instead, we will do Aunt Olivia's poetry reading. Aunt Olivia's poetry reading next. Let's see. And Olivia. And they put it in the Discord. Amazing. Rosetta Stone by Tool. Alrighty then. Picture this. Picture this, if you will. 10 to 2 a.m., ex yogi DMT in a box of Krispy Kremes in my need to know pose just outside of Area 51, contemplating the whole chosen people thingy when a flaming stalled banana split the sky like one would hope but never really expect to see in a place like this, cutting right angle donuts on a dime and stopping right at my Birkenstocks and me yelping, holy fucking shit. Then the X Files being looks like some kind of blue green Jackie Chan with Isabella Bella Rosalini lips and breath that reeks of vanilla. Chig Champa did a slow mo matrix descent out of the butt of a banana vessel and hovered above my bug eyes, my gaping jaw, and my sweaty L Ron Hubbard upper lip, and all I could think was I hope Uncle Martin here doesn't notice that I pissed my fucking pants. So right in his way, like an apparition, he had me crying out. Fuck me, it's gotta be the deadhead chemistry of the blotter right on top of me, you see any motherfucking tea. And after calming me down with some orange slices and some beetle spooning, ET revealed me his singular purpose. He said, you are the chosen one, the one who will deliver the message, a message of hope for those who choose to hear it, and warning for those who do not. Me, the chosen one? The chosen me? And I didn't even graduate from high school. You'd better listen. Then he looked right through me with sniferous almond eyes, didn't even know what that means, must remember to write it down, this is so real, like that time Dave floated away, see my heart is pounding because this shit never happens to me, I can't breathe right now, it was so real, like I woke up in Wonderland, all sort of terrifying, I don't want to be alone while I tell the story, and can anyone tell me why I'll sound like Peanut's parents? Will I ever be coming down? This is so real. Finally, it's my lucky day, see my heart is racing because this shit never happens to me, I can't breathe right now, you believe me? You believe me, don't you? Please believe what I've just said. See, the dead ain't torn, and this wasn't all in my head. See, they took me by the hand and invited me right in. Then they showed me something I don't even know where to begin. Strapped down to my bed, feet cold and eyes red, and I'm out of my head. Am I alive? Am I dead? Can't remember what they said. God damn, shit the bed. Overwhelmed as one would be, placed in my position. Such a heavy burden now to be the one. Born to bear and bring all the details of our ending to write it down for all the world to see. But I forgot my pen. Shit the bed again. Typical. Strapped down to my bed, feet cold and eyes right, I'm out of my head, am I alive, am I dead, sun kissed and suit of bed, gyroscopes and infrared, won't help, I'm brain dead, can't remember what they said, god damn, shit the bed, I can't remember what they said to me, I can't remember what they said to make me out to be the hero, I can't remember what they said, Bob, help me, I can't remember what they said, don't know, won't know, god damn, shit the bed, that was fun, that was a fun one, thank you, thank you for that one, and Olivia, I sure did have fun with that one. All right now. Let's just move right along to Prometheus's three card reading, okay? What's that, Eminem? Prometheus, this one is difficult, but it's, it's good, it's good, it's just also difficult. Also, I think one of my ears is falling off. Just a sec. Is one of my ears falling off? I think I fixed it. There we go. It's okay, I fixed it. <laughs> Prometheus. Um, 
they are real potato of justice. They're just detachable. Um, it's like a special little superpower. It's like they're just like you can take them on and off, but they are real. It doesn't mean they're not real. Like my glasses are real, but it's not like my eyes like really see without them. But like my glasses are real glasses. So like they're just like removable. Anyway, Prometheus, this is not, not good, but it's also not bad. I think that you, you, you are dealing with a decision between two wonderful things. You are dealing with a decision between two wonderful things. King of Wands, Ten of Cups, this is like, no matter what choice you make, you're gonna be happy, okay? You are going to be happy, no matter what choice you make, but you have to make a choice. And one of those things you have to choose not to do. There is no middle. You cannot do them both. You have to let one of those things go. Or else you say goodbye to both of them. Um, there is a very, very, very happy future for you regardless of which one you choose. You will be surrounded by love, you will be surrounded by prosperity, you will be blessed with respect um, and fun and um, joy and sensuality. Like, I feel like you have two wonderful futures and I feel like it's choosing between two families two futures in like a relational context honestly um, and I don't know exactly what that means for you but I do feel like you're in a position where you have to choose you just have to you have to choose this could be choosing between two romantic partners this could also be the kind of thing of like with your romantic partner choosing whether or not to settle in your um like home state or their home state kind of choosing between your family and their family for your future um something like that i feel like you're choosing choosing your family and you have to make a decision you have to make a decision and you I think that decision is kind of impending um, and maybe you feel like you can procrastinate it or you can keep pushing it back but Prometheus you've really got to make a decision you have really got to make a decision okay I hope that resonated in some way I hope that meant something I hope that you enjoyed and if, good luck Okay? Remember, whichever one you choose, your life is going to be full of happiness, alright? There's no wrong decision except for not making one. Okay? You're going to do great. You're going to do great. Farewell, isolated. Have a good day at uni. Thank you for letting me read for you, Prometheus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Dominix, 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 are you here? Are you here, Dominix? Dominix, Dominix, Dominix. Dominix? Alright, we will do... You are. You are? Are you ready for your tarot reading? Click, click. Shaka, shaka, shaka. Skip. Okay. I accidentally marked your thing as complete, so I might need to be reminded whenever you come back. Um, because I don't have it in the queue anymore. So just, just let me know. <laughs> just let me know when you're back. All right, some jack, some jack, some jack. Let's see what the cards have for us. Some jack, some jack, some jack, some jack, some jack, some jack, some jack. Some jack, some jack, some jack, 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 jack. The emperor, the three of pentacles. And the chariot, the emperor, the three of pentacles, the chariot, the chariot, the chariot. 
some jag. You are going to be leading your compatriots to victory, okay? I get the sense that you're kind of in an only semi-official or unofficial position of leadership. Kind of like you're the main three, you're the, you're the main person in the Three Musketeers, but you're also like all equally the Three Musketeers. You're like the main character in the Three Stooges, but like you're kind of all the Three Stooges. I feel like you're maybe in some kind of partnership with other people and like technically on the books y'all are pretty much equal but also you are the glue you are the glue that's holding everyone together you are the core of this group and whenever decisions need to be made everyone kind of looks at you and they're like so so some jack what exactly is the decision that we're making here what exactly is it that we're going to be doing? And you always have that decision. You know how to bring your people into victory, and you're going to do it so, so well. What's on my finger? I don't know. You're going to do it very, 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 very well, Simjack. I think that um, you are in this position of power because you have charisma, and wisdom, and I think you have very good instincts, some Jack, and that sets you apart. Your good instincts, your good instincts. Shka, shka, shka. The Kelsier, yes, the Kelsier, the Kelsier. Um, I think everyone really respects you. And they love to collaborate with you, and they love to work with you. And truly, I think every step of the way, you're just going to have very, very good instincts about how to bring success to you and your compatriots. I don't know if this is going to be a business endeavor or an artistic endeavor, but whatever it is, I think that it's going to lead you and your friends to success. All right. And welcome to the chat, Rasik Blood. I'm glad you enjoy the tarot readings. I'm glad you enjoy. I hope that that resonated some jag. I hope that that meant something to you. Thank you very much for letting me read for you. And good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck, some jag. Good luck, good luck, good luck. You can do it, you can do it. I believe in you, okay? Now we have a name trees for sorry that you have a headache though. I'm so sorry, Nox here. I hope your headache improves. Gets better. Aw, thank the man. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad y'all enjoying. I'll admit that reading gave me a much needed confidence boost with how it resonated. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay, let's do a reading for High on ramens. High on ramens. High on ramens. High on ramens. 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 Let's see what the cards are for. Ramens. 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 We have the five of wands. The ten of cups again. And judgment. 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 Oh, goodness. Hi, on Ramans. 
whenever I do tarot readings for a long time, sometimes I feel like they get either more and more esoteric or more and more awkwardly literal. So, I hope that you still enjoy this. <laughs> but, I mean, I have a pretty literal um, vision here immediately. Um, this is a bowl of ramen. <laughs> this is a bowl of ramen. High on ramens. Okay? This is a bowl of ramen. And it's a little bit chaotic at first. But you have the magic eye. And no matter how chaotic your bowl of ramen looks, you're cooking a damn good bowl of ramen. And don't you let anyone tell you otherwise. You know how to turn the chaos into a masterpiece. A culinary masterpiece. People will be asking you, um, why are you putting that ingredient in there? Isn't that kind of weird? Are you just doing that because it's what's in your cabinet? And you'll be like, no. It is in my cabinet, and I do need to use it, but also I'm putting it in because I know it will taste good, and I'm putting in the perfect amount to make it delicious, okay? So this might be a metaphor for other things in your life. You might be making chaotic decisions that other people don't understand. Other people will see them as chaotic, but you know that they are strategic. You know that you have eyes like the bird of prey, and you know you know what decisions you're making and why you're making them. You're on the hunt. You're making the perfect bowl of ramen. You're making the perfect degree path. You're making the perfect garden. You are decorating your room in the way that you want to decorate your room. And the other people might not understand it, but whenever they see it when it's done, everyone will be amazed at the symmetry at the beauty, at the clear intentionality, at the Picasso-esqueness of it, okay? It will be a gorgeous. Also, Picasso needs to be cancelled, but, like, that's irrelevant right now. Um, you have an eye, an ear, a nose, ramens. of an architect, and you know how to create beauty and balance. And m most importantly, what I feel with the Ten of Cups is that you know how to create home and love. Home and love. Other people may not understand your decisions, but that does not matter. Okay? You've done great. Thank you so much for letting me read for you. I hope that resonated. I hope that resonated. I hope that resonated. Click, click, click. What did Picasso do? Picasso's granddaughter is a Picasso expert, and she has done a lot of work in talking about Picasso's personal life. <laughs> and, um, dear God, wasn't he a fascist? I actually know nothing about his politics. I don't think so, though. But maybe. I don't know. Um, he had... <laughs> he... Beef nib. Beef nib's got it. He didn't exactly hate women. <laughs> he just, um, sought to destroy them for his art. He sought to destroy them. To, I actually have a pretty good quote. Let me, let me pull up this quote for you. Let me pull up this quote. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pull up this quote. This is in a, in a memoir of Picasso. Um, or a memoir of Picasso's granddaughter, who obviously suffered the downstream effects of 
Picasso's tumultuous relationships with women. She said, He submitted them to his animal sexuality, tamed them, bewitched them, ingested them, and crushed them onto his canvas. After he had spent many nights extracting their essence, once they were bled dry, he would dispose of them. Figuratively, for him, but, like, you know, he was probably just, like, a bad dude, you know? He was probably just, like, a, like a, like a, one of those artists, nar narsa artists, nar narsa artists? Nars, nar, nart, narcissists. There's a word. There's a punny word here somewhere. I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, he had like a series of failed marriages that kind of usually ended in the women like being pretty, pretty like effed up. Um, <laughs> Nazi. <laughs> Honestly, beef nib. I love that because <laughs> they're. That's very funny. <laughs> a Nazi. <laughs> Do you think that was his true self or just fame catching up to him and him being absorbed by it? Um, I don't think there's a difference. Um, I think if... I think if... I don't think if, 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 well, first of all, I think it, if you're asking was he like that before he was famous, I, w I think yes, but also I think if being famous changes you, then it's not like you're not yourself, it's just, you're, uh, you're, it's just that fame has changed you, but you're still, that's, that is your real self, you know what I mean? Like, um... You're just different, but it's still real. It's still real. Don't you think fame can change influence people? Yes, but it doesn't make them into fake people. It makes them into just another version of themselves. Sometimes fame can make people better because they have resources that they used to not have. Sometimes fame makes people worse, but I don't think it I don't think that fame creates a fake version of people. Um, different things can create a fake version of people, like m media, propaganda, that can create a fake version of people. But like, if we're talking about how being famous affects someone personally, then I think that it's fame doesn't make you r less r real. It can just make you in into a bad person, but it's still real. What great artist doesn't have something off about them? That's true. If they were boring and without problems, they would be ASM artists. <laughs> I have many problems. <laughs> um, ASM artists have many problems too. Um, many people have many problems. Many people have many problems. Um, and honestly, I think that it's an interesting part of Picasso's story. Um, I think I don't know what you mean by judging him. I think I think judging people is fine no matter no matter who they are. I think the judgments that you make about people can say something about who you are. Um but like I don't think it makes his art any less interesting. I don't think it makes his I don't think it makes his art bad. I think it's just an important part of his story that is often overlooked. And um, all, obviously all the people who were intimately involved in his life are like dead now. And so it's just, it's just interesting. It's just all interesting. And um, yeah, that's all. Scary, scary, scary. Thank you for your prime. Thank you so very much. Thank E R S K Y S K S underscore one two four S K click 
judge or condemnation. Yeah, that's a good, that's a very good distinction. Um, condemnation. Yeah, I don't think Picasso is, like, worse than a lot of other artists. So, I think different people can make different decisions on who who is bad enough for them to condemn. Um, but I don't think Picasso, like, I think these quotes that came out about him, the fact that his granddaughter has done so much work to kind of unveil these things about his personal life, makes us able to condemn him because we have evidence, right? I don't know if that means we should condemn him next to other artists who we just don't have as much data about. Not that all artists are misogynists, not that all artists are racists or prejudiced, but most artists have skeletons in their closets. Most people have regrets. Most people hurt people in their lives. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like probably condemnation is not, is not good in this, well, we can obviously condemn the actions, but, um, if condemnation means discarding them, um, if condemnation means eliminating them from the canon of art history, if condemnation means, um, considering Picasso wholesale to just, like, be bad just because we know more about him than we know about da Vinci, then, uh, no. But I think we can certainly condemn his attitude towards women, and we can certainly condemn the specific things that he did. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hate the sin, love the sinner. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. T-bomb, thank you for your prize. B shk osk m click click B shk one find eight sk All right, Dolly Joel, we have a word up for Mr. Olympia, Mr. Olympia. Using them, but I also think that fame power removes the brakes from people, and that realization might just put them in any direction. Of course, they're still aware of what they're doing and should be able to distinguish good from bad. So it's okay to judge them, it's just understandable how that could happen. Yeah, I think that's true. I think we should always be compassionate. Um, we should always be compassionate to the reality that having a platform can change people for sure. Yes, yes, we need to understand that. Casting judgment. Mr. Olympia, Mr. Olympia, Mr. Olympia. Um, I think that when it comes to parasociality, um, people talk about parasocial relationships most often in the positive context of like, oh, I feel like this streamer is my best friend. Oh, I feel like this YouTuber is my best friend. I feel like I know them. I listen to them every night. I blah, 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 blah. And that's fine, that's an interesting conversation, but I feel like not enough people talk about negative parasocial relationships whenever there's someone online who has a disagreeable belief and you feel like they're your personal enemy or you feel like you hate them. I think a lot of, <laughs> I think that there's a, like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna name names here. I'm just gonna be brave and name names. I think a lot of people have like a negative parasocial relationship with like Tucker Carlson. I do not like Tucker Carlson, but I think some people like hate him too. Like he's just like, just like relax. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And I think there's a lot of people like that. Um, people love to hate him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah, hate watching. Hate watching is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, but then there's other people as well. Like, there's, um, whenever people assume, there's a lot of, um, pundits for various political ideas or whatever. 
and people will assume things about their personal lives based off of their politics. And I think that is a very good example of like, hmm, you might be having a negative parasocial relationship here. If you assume that so-and-so's marriage must be deeply unhappy and abusive because of their politics, then like, maybe don't do that. Like, maybe... Maybe don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think negative parasocial relationships need to be critiqued more than they are and need to be uh, like understood. People, I don't think, are self-aware often about negative parasocial relationships, but I think the internet's matured a lot in self-awareness when it comes to positive social, or sorry, parasocial relationships. But because people don't talk about the neg negative parasocial relationships as much. I feel like people aren't kind of self-critical in that way at all. Mr. Olympia, Mr. Olympia, Mr. Olympia, Mr. Olympia. Agen, hello Agen, welcome in. Thank you so much for your sub. Thank you for your 10 months. Aishk, Aishk, G, Glick, Yusk, N, Glick, S, I, Double L -sh -k Y -s -k O Sh -k Sh -k Sh -k We gotta remember that the person could be an asshole in the media and we could disagree with them, but to their family and friends they could just be a great person and in real life they may actually be good. We gotta learn to differentiate. Right, well, it's like, people who are... People... So, like, that's true, what you said. A lot of these people are just, like, fully fake on the internet. But also, even people who are, like, assholes in the media, um, even if they're not being, like, fake on in the media, they might have a very different relationship to a camera than they have to their family and friends. So they might still maintain all of those, like, problematic and harmful beliefs with their family and friends, but presumably their family and friends also have those harmful beliefs, <laughs> and so it's not like they're being aggressive with their family and friends. They're probably just having a great time, making hot dogs, and swimming in the summer, and being happy. And, like, I think we sometimes have to admit that really problematic people do have a capacity for happiness and they have a capacity to make their loved ones happy and that's uncomfortable and likewise people who are very good people who are um people who have people people who have very agreeable political beliefs um people who are the people that that you do want to vote for that you do want to support they, they have the capacity to be shitty friends. They have the capacity to be shitty wives and shitty husbands and shitty parents. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't support them. And in the same way that it doesn't mean that you should support the people who are, like, nice but have problematic beliefs. Like, we just, I think, as we just need to, we just need to come to terms with the fact that sometimes bad people can be happy, and also good people can be angry and sad and toxic. <laughs> and sometimes those things align, and sometimes they don't. Um, and it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, but um, it is true. It is true. Welcome. Thank you so much for your sub. Thank you for your four months. ASMR sound waves. ASMR sound waves. Click, click, click. A S M click, click. R S O S K U click. N S K D click. W S K A. 
Exactly, Yagen. If you make a living being an asshole and peddling that misinformation, I don't care if you're a good person at home, you're a bad influence to a lot of people, and that's not good. I agree with that. I agree with that completely. Um, and I think that whenever people see, um, whenever people see bad people being nice, and it changes their minds, whenever people are like, oh, Kim Jong-un was really nice to me in person he's actually very chummy a great guy great sense of humor it's like like that can be true that can be true that doesn't that doesn't mean they're a good person <laughs> that does not mean they're a good person that shouldn't like break your conception of people whenever you see evil people being happy it shouldn't make you um it shouldn't make you change your mind. It should just make you come to terms with the fact that sometimes bad people are happy. And it feels uncomfortable, but it's true. Sometimes bad people are happy, and sometimes very good people are very angry and sad. A lot of, a lot of very good political organizers of the past, like ML, MLK, MLK Jr., um, um, who's the guy who I can't think of right now? Who's the guy who I can't think of right now? I can't think of him. A lot of, like, great political figures of the past who have striven, made strides, great strides in areas of civil rights, or great scientists who did a whole bunch of, like, genuinely wonderful things for science, for curing things. Um, they had, like, horrible, unhappy marriages. Some of them, like, beat their wives. Some of them, um, were, like, you know, sad, angry p people. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be glad they did what they did. Um, it just means that, like, people are complicated. And it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, but it, it do be true. It do be true. Shh, 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 shh. Sugar, sugar. Mr. Olympia. Mr. Olympia. Mr. Olympia. Sugar, sugar. Ooh, I don't think I agree with that, Ogden. If your parent is an asshole and peddles misinformation, I don't care if he's a good dad. You're benefiting at the expense of others, and you can also eat poop. I don't think we should punish the children of, like, um, people who are bad if they love their parents. I, I think that is, I think that is too far. I think, I think if your I think if your parents treat you well, um, I think if your parents treat you half decent, even, sometimes even if your parents abuse you, if your parents teach you or treat you half decent, I think you have a pretty biological love for them. And you, that's like a, like a bio, like, you kind of almost can't help but like seek validation and approval from your parents at least a little bit. Unless they like really, really, really do bad. <laughs> but even if parents like do a little bad and mess up, you usually like kind of love them a lot. So, um, I have empathy. I do not want bad people's children to eat poop, um, because I think they've probably, they're, they're just people. They're just people. They're just kids. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, no inherited sins. I agree. I agree. Gandhi, Vidge, that was who I was thinking of. Gandhi. I was thinking of Gandhi. I couldn't think of it. I wanted to say Buddha, and I was like, I'm not obviously not thinking of Buddha. <laughs> Gandhi. Gandhi. Thank you. I 
actually I think no one should eat poop. I know it's a hot take. I don't even think we should make make murderers eat poop. Um <laughs> Worse than Gandhi Churchill. Oh yeah, I've heard. I've heard that. I've heard that. I've heard that. All right, so now we have a word up for stippled, 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 stippled. Ah yes, Dominic's. We will do your tarot reading. I think I'm too against like punitive justice to um to believe in to believe in making people eat poop. Um I think most people need need to be hugged until they turn into better people. You know what I mean? I think I think people need to be given like good meals and hugs. <laughs> I truly truly believe that. Truly, truly, truly. Stipple, stipple. I am an idealist. It's very true. is true. I don't know what to do with those people. Those people terrify me. It is true, though. It is true. And I don't know what to do. It always, it always makes me sad. I think, like, I think it's a big minority of people who are loved and happy and are still bad. And when I say bad, I mean, like, bad, bad. Like, bad, 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 bad. But, um, yeah. I wish we could hug the bad out of all bad people. I think we can hug the bad out of most bad people. Um, and by hug, I don't like, I don't like literally mean hug, but I mean like, you know, I mean like a constellation of things that we can simplify into the word hug. <laughs> I think a lot of greed, corporate greed, is rooted in um, a lack of trust in the world. And I think that if people truly trusted that the world was there to take care of them, the greediest of the greediest would not be as greedy. You know, like, there's there's reasons to have a bunker. I get it. There's reasons to have a nice pool. I get it. That's not what I'm talking about. When you're hoarding billions of cash money, you need, you, there's an insecure, there's a deep insecurity there. There is a deep lack of trust that you have in the world to handle resources and to handle taking care of you, um, and so even for the greediest of the greediest, I feel like I just wish I could tell them, I wish, I, I wish there was a way to make them trust the world, to just, like, do well with, with resources. Oh, Noxier. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's not about money at that point, it's just power and rank. Yeah, it's like confusing. It's like confusing. Alright, let's see what the cards have for Dominic's.
we have the king of wands again coming out to play the two of wands the two of wands the two of wands and the three Three of Cups, Three of Cups, Three of Cups, Three of Cups. Very well-rounded, very cute little happy reading, Dominic's. Puppy card, yes, puppy card. That's what I'm talking about, lack of community. No community would allow, allow such an accumulation of wealth because it's detrimental to the coexistence of the community. I agree, I agree. It's a crack. the economy when that kind of thing happens. All right, Dominic's. King of Wands, Two of Wands, Three of Cups. Ah, this reading is about foresight, Dominic's. I think that there is um, a friendship, and it's probably a multifaceted friendship with more than one person, um, that you see on the horizon that you see promise in, um, someone who you want to be friends with, a friend group that you feel like you would fit in with, and you will fit in with them, Dominic's. If there is a group, a club, a, a bubble of people, a workplace that you've been kind of eyeing, like, maybe I want to get involved there, maybe I would get along with those people, you would, you would. You will. You would be popular, popular, popular with those people, Dominic's. You have a very good foresight, and you will be great friends, great friends, great friends with these people. I think you'll fit in, and I think that they will have a lot of fun with you. And I think you have a good vision for who you are and who you have the potential to be within this group. Very, very good foresight. Good foresight, Dominic's. I think you know yourself very well, and you're able to recognize um, kind of your role in the world and just where you fit in. And yeah, I think that this, is, this reading is an affirmation of that. If there's a group of people who you want to get involved with, who you're curious about, get involved with them, Dominic's. great time with you. Okay? Thank you for letting me read for you. I'm basically beefing someone on my current shifts and have been considering going into early shifts. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Perfect. Yes, yes. Those earlier shifts might be the place to be. Thank you for letting me read for you. I hope it resonated. I hope it resonated. All right. Sleepy. Not to defend capitalism, but as you're going up the cor corporate or community ladder and see how people mess up around you, wouldn't you want to keep the power and keep the ship going the right way instead of trusting it with people that might not do it well? Of course, extremes shouldn't exist either, but to some point it makes sense. I agree. I'm not talking about those people. I am only talking about the extremes. I am only talking about the people hoarding like hundreds of millions, billions, billions, massive amounts of wealth. Massive. I'm not talking about bosses who have very nice houses. I love that for them. <laughs> Literally, I love that for them. Um, yes. I think this is a problem whenever, like, we critique things that there's people who feel defensive um, because they identify with the people who we're critiquing. This happens with a lot of a lot of crimes against children. This happens with a lot of crimes um, uh, or a lot of a lot of capitalism issues. This happens with a lot of terrorism issues as well when there's um, when there's uh, shooters, school shooters, and people um, feel like they can 
they read the manifesto and they and they and they and they can empathize it's like that doesn't mean that you should identify as that person you are obviously very different from that person because you didn't do what they did you are you are not who we're talking about when we're saying that attitudes in atti attitudes you are not what we're talking about when we're saying misogyny is a problem we're talking about people who kill all of the women in their school <laughs> we're not talking about you we're, no one's talking about putting you in prison no one's talking about taking away your access to whatever um like it's okay this happens a lot as well again with like um people who physically abuse or traffic trafficked people who sell children um into chi child trafficking um there's other people who like watch some weird anime and they start defending the people who are like doing trafficking because they for some reason feel like they are um in involved in the critiques against the traffickers and it's like no we're not talking about you we're not talking about you we're not talking about you like just we need to do, we do need to tighten laws and stop very bad things from happening and obviously again for the specific example that we were talking about um whenever bosses who are maybe millionaires people who own very successful companies whenever we critique people like jeff bezos or whenever we critique people like um, who are clearly just hoarding massive amounts of wealth people who are bosses feel attacked and feel defensive because they identify with you know millionaires identify with billionaires but there is a massive difference there is a there's just orders of magnitude of difference between these two people and they shouldn't identify with them it's like we're not talking about you be a good boss have a successful company you know like do your thing pay your taxes it's fine <laughs> we're not talking about you <laughs> we're not coming for you you know but um yeah there's an issue with identifying with them um, people, people getting defensive, um, over, over identities that they should not identify with, basically. Um, yeah. Billionaire is bad, millionaire is okay. <laughs> I mean, in this economy, yeah, I would say so. I think if you're a millionaire in Washington, in California, it's like it's like not even that much you know i mean it's like you're doing well obviously good job good job but like there was this guy there was this guy who um actually <laughs> i talked about him earlier he was the guy who gave me this labradorite there was this guy and he um liked me and he had so much guilt so much guilt because he was set to inherit two million dollars in his life in like a couple decades or whatever he was going to inherit two million dollars and he felt so much guilt and so much responsibility he was like always just you know like what am i gonna do i need to start i need to like like what should i do should i build a library should i build a like what am i gonna do and i felt weird because i had to kind of keep reminding him that it wasn't actually that much <laughs> like it's it's not it's not crazy but also it felt like it was i was hurting his ego if i said that because <laughs> i think he identified with the idea of being a wealthy person you know what i mean 
um, and so it was a very, it was a very difficult conversation to navigate, um, I know, exactly, Buddy gets two million and wants to build a library, it's like, I don't even know if you can do that, like, I kind of wanted to encourage him to just, like, set himself up for his family, you know, like, just get a really, get a really nice house, man, and get your kids into good schools, and, like, just be happy, that's like, that's like happiness money, and that is okay, <laughs> you can just have that, you can just have that, invest and support your local business and charities, yeah, totally, totally, <sighs> get a nice house, invest, de-stress, yeah, I buy so many watermelons with those two mil, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, and I remember I used to have a boss as well who, like, um, you know, we worked at this, um, at this business that had a very progressive aesthetic, I would say, and, um, my boss felt very guilty because she had dreams of being a successful business owner, and I, she literally asked the employees one day, which, oh my goodness, if this isn't, like, awkward, an awkward situation to put your, like, employees that you're paying minimum wage to, <laughs> she was like, if this business gets successful, do you think I'm a bad person if I want, like, a really nice fence and a pool? Like, she felt so guilty, and it was like, mm, no. <laughs> like, that's fine, that's fine, girl, you get that nice house, you get that fence, you get that pool, whenever we are in the kitchen, sweating our asses off and talking shit on Jeff Bezos, we are not talking about you, it's okay, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, boss. Okay. Dolly Joel. What can I read for you, Dolly Joel? What can I read for you, Dolly Joel? In these last couple minutes. Here's the thing. If you're able to support your employees and you actually do so, if your workers are happy, you're a successful business owner. Yeah. True. my home army cadence I left my home army cadence um I'm not sure if this is the right thing This is what came up. It's called I Left My Home Military Cadence, which yeah, I'm hoping that's the same thing. Your daddy was home when you left. Your mama was home when you left. Your sister was home when you're left. Your brother was home when you're left. The dog was home when you left. The cat was home when you left. The fish was home when you left. Your daddy, your mama, your sister, your brother, the dog, the cat, the fish was home when you left. And that's the reason you left. I left my phone. I left my home. <laughs> Fordian slip <up> there. <laughs> I left my home to join the army. I left my home to join the army. The day I left, my mama cried. She thought that I would surely die. I left my wife standing at the door. She knew that I would die at war. I left my son playing in the yard. Seeing daddy leave made him cry so hard. The day I left, I shook my daddy's hand. He said that I had become a man. Lee, 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 to join the army. To join the army. Lovely. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. I guess she'll die. Exactly. Exactly. And now, de Modril, it has been so long. Thank you for being patient. D, k, e, sh, k, m, k, k, o, s, k, d, k, k, r, sh, k, i, dot, l, s, k, t, k, t, k, and the noxy.
dear thank you for gifting one last lovely 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 sub thank you so much nox here and sk oh sk x click i dot r shk underscore 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 stipple 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 yes title time what are we titling tonight's streamy stream what are we titling tonight's stream 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 sk even know what we did tonight. We did a lot of tarot. Tarot, 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 billionaires. <laughs> Something like that. We did talk about guerrilla combat. We did, we did. Tarot, um, Jake Paul versus Silverback Gorilla. Um, rich people. Tarot, Jake Paul versus Silverback Gorilla, rich people. Yeah. Sound good? That's what we got. Thank you, my friends, for reminding my brain of what we even did. It always is a help. <sighs> Who are we reading? Oh, we have Bell Nadine, Bell Sprout. I do love Bell Sprout. I think we gotta do the best snail VTuber on YouTube or on Twitch. Whoops. <laughs> best. Snail VTuber on Twitch. Let's read Bell Sprout. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much for enjoying this stream with me. I hope that you got tingles. I hope that you got some relaxation. I hope that your brain got everything that it needed. Okay. Thank you, Sphirin. I strive to have a tiny bit of reason <laughs> if I get just a little bit. <laughs> it's a success. 